Hi. Um, I've written an article in response to the claims about the moon matrix um, being made um, in social media in particular and I wanted to respond from the perspective of the sacred feminine. So I've written an article but I figured more people would probably uh, watch uh, a video rather than read an article so forgive me but I'm going to just read the article um, instead of speaking spontaneously as I usually do. So. For years I've been aware of David Icke's assertion that the moon isn't what it seems and I've watched the YouTube footage of what is believed to be military bases on the dark side of the moon and since my Dharma is to serve um, by providing a daily update on my community Facebook page The Moon Woman um, over the years I've had people privately ask me what my views are on this and then um, a catalyst happened last Sunday evening where uh, I witnessed a very well-meaning brother um, who does seek to serve the new paradigm joining with this chorus of those denouncing the moon as something less than sacred whilst uh, he was also recognizing the need for the return of the sacred feminine. So this mixed message um, caused me to pause and reflect. And I sat with this in order to really drop in and see what it brought up within my heart's wisdom, within my knowing, my intuitive knowing, within my body, uh, what felt true in my body consciousness and in my, in my subtle feelings. And then having done that, having sat with it for a few days now, I really felt... Um, Another catalyst happened in the, the course that I teach on the forum, Teaching Women to Live in Alignment with the Moon. Um, one of the women, you know, posed on the forum, um, you know, about all these different myth-busting things being put out about the moon. So that was the catalyst in me writing this article today. So, the backlash as the sacred feminine rises... As the sacred feminine is returning to restore the sacred balance on life, on, uh, of life on earth, understandably that's attracting a counter energy in response. Now this isn't being done consciously as many are largely unaware of the layers of prejudice that are still operating in their psyche which have been formed through a lifetime of patriarchal conditioning. The patriarchy is simply the fear of the feminine and that leads to the suppression of any feminine trait within oneself or a not valuing of that if they see it in others or in society at large. This predisposition to dismiss all things feminine as poppycock or myth or old wives tales um, is an arrogant assumption for those who hold um, less value, hold this as less value than science um, and, and this perspective is ultimately limiting to our evolution as a species. After all science is continually evolving as we evolve and so we're constantly updating what we once held as scientific fact um, as we supersede old, outmoded ways of thinking. Those who worship science as the ultimate truth are probably the most susceptible to being manipulated by the plethora of disinformation being deliberately disseminated um, and perpetuated by those who actively are seeking to undermine the rise of the sacred feminine. Why? Well the role of the sacred feminine is to unveil truth by revealing that which can't be readily seen whether that's the shadow within our own psyche, such as our disowned and rejected aspects, or the covert operations designed to benefit only a few at a cost to the many on a global scale. It is precisely this awakening of Kundalini uh, life force, which is the sacred feminine essence um, within men and women, um, known uh, in the ancient Egyptian pantheon as serpent power, when this rises it awakens the consciousness in the individual, 
which then elevates the group mind. Now, the inevitable outcome, as those inner serpents rise, the people will rise and reclaim ourselves and our Earth Mother as sacred and sovereign beings. I once uh, coined the quote, the old regime will be overthrown by a shuck-defied woman. So whilst women are definitely leading this uh, phenomena, the activation of this sacred feminine essence is happening um, within the soul, which is the feminine part of the psyche within both men and women. Um, and as this happens, um, our soul becomes dominant rather than the ego, which is what rules the rational mind. So we become more aware of our subtle senses, including our intuition, and use um, that as um, uh, receiving and perceiving reality in addition to our rational mind. Now, those who stand to gain from the old external uh, paradigm of inequitable external power they seek to hold on to their concept of power even as the wheel turns and their reign comes to an end they do so by actively disseminating information designed to create confusion in the hope of undermining the credibility of those who pose a threat to unveiling their secret ops this most often takes the form of myth busting quoting logic from a scientific standpoint to discredit anything presented from an intuitive viewpoint. So I've listed six reasons for the current focus on discrediting the moon. Number one, attuning to the lunar cycle is the fastest way to strengthen your intuition. The more we develop our intuition as our inner guidance system, the less we look to external authority figures and then relinquish our personal power to them. Number two, the more women who gather at new moon because they're aligning with the lunar cycle, and that's when the majority of women on the planet menstruate, which also um, amplifies their intuition and their psychic power, they become um, a, a huge force to channel that psychic energy in a positive way to heal the planet, thereby counteracting the dark rituals being uh, deliberately performed at Dark Moon, at um, the seasonal vortices known as the Sabbaths, these times of uh, potent energy, these windows, um, using blood sacrifices, using children to anchor a destructive intent into... Um, the collective uh, experience of reality. Number three, the more people who subscribe to the notion that the moon has no influence upon their psyche, despite it affecting the gravitational pull of the world's oceans and us being 70% water, the more our collective will remain emotionally immature, emotionally unbalanced and unstable, which creates continual karma drama and addictive behavior as a form of self-soothing emotional comfort. So unlike those who actively seek to illuminate their psyche by attuning to the moon and understanding the daily lunar lesson which is impacting our inner self through an understanding of the lunar sign and the lunar phase each day, we can then witness and uh, take responsibility for our emotional states and access strategies to balance them rather than unconsciously projecting them on others, creating conflict and tension and drama. Number four, the moon governs our subconscious mind. If we disconnect from that 90% part of our minds, we lose access to our collective universal myths, archetypes and symbols which reside in this subconscious part of our minds. We also lose our connection to the world soul, to the collective thought forms, the collective energy which unifies us and that's where our strength lies. So the more people who only operate out of their 10% rational mind are easier to control because their locus of reality is external rather than internal.
Five. The moon reflects the light of the sun. Just as the feminine holds up a mirror to the masculine as a call to know thyself. So within our own psyche this happens and within the realm of relationships. This is why we're most likely to intuit insights of self-realization at the time of the most illumination, which is the full moon, when the moon is illuminating most of the sun's light. So over the three days of full moon, this is the time of union, of intimacy between opposites. Without this awareness, we're more likely to repeat the same dysfunctional relationship patterns. Number six. I can't do that on one hand. When women sight the moon regularly, they um, and align by living in alignment with understanding how the ebb and flow of the lunar phases impacts our energy levels, we regulate our endocrine system, which is our hormones. So we're less likely to have emotional meltdowns um, and uh, be erratic emotionally. So when we do have emotional outbursts, this serves to undermine our credibility um, and uh, makes it easier to dismiss the feminine. So not only that, women that aren't living in alignment with the lunar cycle um, have a, a, a higher rate of infertility and the powers that be do want to depopulate. So, um, you know, they're not wanting women to be um, fertile. So um, when we understand, um, you know, that the powers that be want us to be operating out of our ego rather than our soul, okay, because when we're in ego, um, we're more worried about what each other thinks and about what's happening out there than really listening to our true self, which is the ultimate navigational tool for us in discerning truth from fiction. So instead of getting caught up in you know, a wormhole of debate about the origins of the moon or which celestial race is inhabiting the moon, this for me is more important that we focus on how the benevolent universe in its all-knowing divine design has gifted us this aspect of creation for us to integrate this into our awakening process. So, in speaking to the claim that the moon is hollow, there are claims the moon is hollow. So what if it is? A pearl is hollow. Pearls are associated with lunar wisdom. Like the moon, they are luminous and they become whole through persistent irritation, the grain of sand in the shell. Just like we become wise through our emotional um, trials and tribulations if we reflect upon our lesson. Only those who focus solely on the physical, which is our base dense energy center, would dismiss something because it is hollow. The feminine is the space of the unseen, the ephemeral, the void, for it's within this space that we germinate light within. It would make perfect sense that the feminine celestial body, honoured by indigenous wise women for thousands of years um, and, and known as Grandmother Moon, would contain a space deep within for the feminine journey, which is a journey of descent, into a womb space or a cave to become wise. To the question, aren't there military bases on the moon? Yeah, there is footage of bases on the dark side of the moon, as well as images resembling satellite dishes. Now, one hypothesis is that these were established as a beacon for emotional manipulation. So by beaming pulses of energy in the direction of Earth, they amplify the existing influence of the moon. Now, what this does is it magnifies potentially the dramas that we get invested in every day. So we can potentially become so distracted by our self-created drama that we wouldn't um, 
be intuitively awake and aware to sense something isn't right and to notice the covert uh, ops that are being perpetuated against the populace of our planet. There are 600 documented cases of UFO sightings on the surface of the Earth. For hundreds of years, astronomers have recorded incidents of bright lights and other unidentified phenomena. They've even found a female star being on the moon. It's interesting for me that it was um, a female that they found since the moon is associated with all things feminine. But equally, NASA has never responded to the fact that they ceased all moon exploration. And for myself, I would tend to, um, you know, think that there's perhaps legs in the idea that those beings that are uh, in residence on the moon have made it clear that NASA aren't welcome. Um, and given the higher intelligence of those who have uh, mastered light travel, I, I would tend to trust them uh, more than I would um, NASA, who discloses only what they feel is, um, you know, appropriate to their ends, to the general populace. So this is a call to neither shoot nor idolise the messenger. And I'll explain what I mean by that. In this time of accelerated awakening and mass communication, it is imperative that we look beyond what is immediately apparent and engage our own subtle senses so we can discern what resonates within us as truth and avoid becoming our worst our uh, own worst enemies and I quote Steve Biko from the apartheid era who speaks or spoke the most powerful thing in the hands of the oppressor are the minds of the oppressed it is our lunar intuition which is in which enhances our ability to be skeptical we need to be skeptical this is the ability to be open but discerning as opposed to being cynical when we're completely closed-minded. So how do we do that in practical terms? Okay, if you see somebody presenting information like me on YouTube, or whether it's a live speaker or somebody who's written an article uh, or recorded a podcast, focus on the energy behind the words. Focus on the conduct of the messenger to discern the frequency of the thought form that they've tuned into and adopted as their own opinion. Only engage with those who speak from the heart, those who feel open, humble and transparent rather than those who use the glamour of charisma or force of will to impose their view. Observe whether the speaker's energy field is perceptibly clear and strong and whether they seem healthy um, indicating strong energetic boundaries. Notice their impact on your energy field as you listen to their transmission. Does their message leave you feeling uplifted and inspired, clear and strong? Or does it leave you feeling alarmed, disempowered or confused? This awareness ensures that we aren't gullible in taking on everything somebody says, even if they have previously established our trust. This applies to the leaders of the new era, because they are often the ones targeted. Um, the term is TI, a targeted individual. Those who the shadow elite flag and say, right, we're going to um, do what we can to either discredit them or hijack their energy field because we want access to their receptive audience. Ultimately, truth and love are synonymous. So, even when the shadow is being exposed in truth, if the information is being presented through a filter of higher understanding, the effect on the viewer, the listener, the reader will be one of unification and empowerment. However, if the messenger is, is divisive, inciting a viewpoint of separation, fear and anger, this is a signal that the information they are sourcing is via their lower chakras, the lower energy centers. Um, and these are the receptors for the lower vibrational states. 
those who operate predominantly out of their lower self are less energetically aware so they're more susceptible to being hijacked and overshadowed by imposing energies with an agenda contrary to their own conscious intent so use the force use the force look if what i speak sounds far-fetched consider the mythology most widely recognized as relevant for multiple generations indicated by box office sales star wars the call is to awaken our ability to recognize the use and power of the force this includes how the force could be used to harm or heal depending on the intent with the prim primary mode of attack by the empire being malevolent psychic attack mind control and directed energetic attacks symbolized in the film by lasers so too we will never anchor the new paradigm so long as we refute the possibility that we are each able to be manipulated by thought forms imposing energies and emotional dramas generated by the media to keep us distracted and fighting amongst ourselves this is a time to be ever vigilant by questioning everything by ensuring we become energetically responsible by regularly clearing and strengthening our personal energy field and boundaries to avoid being compromised in any way this is what it means to be a jedi a sacred warrior so instead of becoming enraged at those who you see as being out of alignment with the divine source of all life seek the shadow aspects the unhealed shamed judged out of alignment parts of yourself and seek to heal this knowing this will contribute and accelerate the awakening in the collective and remember ultimately everything is from the same source yes there are polarities within that but if we focus on amplifying those polarities with an attitude of us and them we only seek to further the mind as the operating dominant system which keeps us in the realm of limiting thought and ultimately if we focus on polarities we escalate conflict and division it is um, synchronistic that as I write this the uh, planet Jupiter is transiting through Virgo the sign of the priest the priestess the sacred vessel and Jupiter is the planetary sphere of expansion uh, expansion known by the Romans as Jove hence the saying by Jove um, and the lesson in that is if we want to expand our sphere of influence through we're going to do it through honoring the sacred and through being discerning by using our intuition to decide for ourselves what is truth what feels like truth in our bones and what doesn't um, and by doing that we'll never blindly follow anybody regardless of their good intent like as the saying goes the road to hell is paved with good intentions so thank you for listening to my um, offering today and would love to hear your comments blessings